Hello there, everyone! Welcome to episode number 637 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. My guest this week is Wibish Barathan, Director and Project Lead for PSOC 4 Multisense at Infineon. And we're talking all about the new PSOC 4 MCU family. We chat about the benefits of this new microcontroller family, the details of Multisense at the heart of these new MCUs, and why the innovative new liquid level sensing capabilities of these microcontrollers make them a perfect fit for noisy environments. Also this week, I check out new electronic skin created for robots by the University of Cambridge that can give them the same ability as humans to feel pressure, heat, and pain. So without further ado, please welcome Vibish to Fish Fry. Hi, Vibish. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me here on this platform. Absolutely. So, Webish, tell me about this new PSOC 4 MCU family that Infineon just recently launched. It's an exciting time for MCUs at Infineon. We launched PSOC 4 Multisense, our latest PSOC 4 MCU, into the PSOC 4 family. What is new about this product is that it actually enables CapSense and Multisense capability. Those of you are familiar with the Infineon PSOC 4 family, it's a well recognized in the industry for capacity sensing, and we have been a market leader for last two decades with the capacity sensing HMI technologies. With the multi-sense, we are adding more sensing capability, as the name says, into the same product, namely inductive sensing and liquid sensing and overattach. So now the developers have the endless possibility to create new HMI solutions for their product, be it a metallic touch surface on your product be it a contactless liquid sensing on a modern product or optimizing cost for the system design using overtouch. The single chip solution can actually offer all of this flexibility. So, Wabish, talk to me about the use cases for the PSOC 4 MCU family. Where would they be a good fit? There is a long list of use cases that the uh, new multi-sense can enable. Let me start with the capacity sensing. It's a feature that we have been supporting on this uh, product. What is new is that this capacity sensing now comes with a 10x lower power consumption at a 10x higher SNR performance. This allows the customers to make their existing HMI much more optimized for power and also sensor size. What this means is that on the end product, you can have a more longer battery life and also smaller form factor product itself. Capitalizing on the performance, you can also enable things like overtouch where you can actually remove some of the system components and remove the system restrictions and therefore offer the same function, but at a more optimal cost for your product. This is on the capacity sensing. Now, if you look at the inductive sensing, those of you who are worked with the capacity sensing uh, will know this. Capacity sensing works only on a non-conductive or non-metallic surfaces, you know, such as plastic, glass, and things like that. So it's an inherent limitation for capacity sensing to work on a metallic surfaces. And there are many products that have a metallic finish, very commonly found in the kitchen appliances, such as refrigerator, washing machine, dishwashers, and all that. Inductive sensing will enable uh, touch sensing over metallic surfaces very seamlessly. So you can expect that product that has a metallic finish to have embedded touch sensing on those panels. Secondly, finial capacity sensing works great with uh, you know, water, but generally the technology has restrictions that it cannot work under the water or applications where water presence is a concern. Inductive sensing also addresses that concern. Now the touch sensing can be much more reliable in presence of water or those kind of substances. This enables opportunities for designers to be more confident about the product that they design for outdoor application, which needs to withstand water, rain, sweat, and things like that. Also, sometimes the underwater diver camera and things like that, the inductive sensing will be a great fit for the HMI there. Coming to the third sensing method supported by Multisense, it is liquid sensing. If you look around, there are several products that uses or deals with the liquid in our homes, such as uh, floor cleaner, washing machines, dishwasher, uh, varieties of products. 
These products today lacks a reliable sensing method to measure the level of liquids inside. This is important because with the machine learnings and AI capability, these products are becoming smarter. So the Infineon's multi-sense offers a sensing capability that the designers can now use to sense the level of liquid and manage the liquid. For example, you can now know the exact amount of water or liquid in the floor cleaner and also can tell you how much more space can the machine clean before it has to run to the base station to refill it and things like that. So it actually helps you modernize the home appliance product and bring a more intelligence to this product as well. These are mainly the three sensing capability that is offered in the multi-sense and the associated use cases. So are there any other features you'd like to highlight here? Mainly, I think all of these three sensing methods comes with an improved signal to noise ratio performance, like I mentioned, 10x higher performance compared to any other solution out there. Also, they are extremely lower power because of the autonomous and always on sensing capability. In addition to it, if you look around the solution, competitive solutions such as liquid sensing, measuring the liquid very reliably is challenging. For example, liquid can have contaminations inside. Sometimes when you mix the soap, there is a foam on the above the water. Those are really challenged for traditional sensing methods. Our solution can clearly differentiate some of these objects inside of the water and can also clearly differentiate between the actual water level and the spurious objects such as soap foam and things like that. So it's really tuned for real-life use cases in a sensing in a very reliable way. Fantastic. All right. So, Wibish, is there anything else we should know? As a leader of the microcontrollers and controllers, I think it's a really exciting time for the Infinia. We are number one in the MCU uh, space. And this Multisense also received Best in the Show Award in the Embedded World uh, last month. And we continue to invest in the sensing for HMI and Multisense technology field. And I think you will continue to see more products coming in in the near future on this line. And really looking forward to joining the ML and the trend in the industry. Fantastic. All right, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. So, <laughs> Webish, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? There has never been a one favorite thing for me. It always changes depending upon the time and so on. But if you ask me now, I would like to get a sushi in a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> yes, that is, sounds fantastic to me. Awesome. Well, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been my pleasure. Have you heard about the new robotic skin developed by the University of Cambridge and University College London that is durable, low cost, and highly sensitive? That can be added to robotic hands and give robots the ability to detect information similar to the way humans feel things? Okay, so get this. A team of researchers from UCL and the University of Cambridge have developed a new kind of conductive skin for robotic hands that is flexible, easy to fabricate, and can be melted down to form a wide range of complex shapes. This new robotic skin technology can sense and process a range of physical inputs, which allows robots to interact with the physical world in a more meaningful way. So, what makes this robotic skin technology different from other skins meant for robotic applications? Well, other solutions for robotic skins typically work via sensors embedded in small areas of the skin and use a variety of different sensors to detect different kinds of touch. This new electronic skin developed by researchers at Cambridge and UCL is a sensor itself, which is way closer to how our skin works. So, this new robotic skin is definitely not as sensitive as human skin, and it uses a technology called multimodal sensing, which can detect signals from over 860,000 pathways in the material, which allows it to recognize different types of touch, like multiple points being touched at once, a tap of a finger, a hot or cold surface, and even damage like stabbing or cutting. 
Dr. David Hartman from Cambridge's Department of Engineering explains what sets this new technology apart from previous robotic skin endeavors. Having different sensors for different types of touch leads to materials that are complex to make. We wanted to develop a solution that can detect multiple types of touch at once, but in a single material. This team also points out that they wanted to develop a solution that was inexpensive, durable, and suitable for widespread use. Okay, so this is how they did it. First, they melted down a stretchy, soft, and most importantly, electrically conductive gelatine-based hydrogel into the shape of a human hand. From here, they tested a bunch of different electrode configurations to figure out which configuration gave them the most useful information about different types of touch. From just 32 electrodes placed at the wrist, they were able to collect over 1.7 million pieces of information over the whole hand, thanks to the tiny pathways in this conductive material. And the tests that they did with this new robotic skin were pretty fun. They pressed it with their fingers, blasted it with a heat gun, and even cut it open with a scalpel. And from the data gathered from these tests, they trained a machine learning model so the hand would recognize what these different types of touch meant. The team explains their findings like this. We were able to squeeze a lot of information from these materials. They can take thousands of measurements very quickly. We're not at the level where the robotic skin is as good as human skin, but we think it's better than anything else out there at the moment. Our method is flexible and easier to build than traditional sensors and we're able to calibrate it using human touch for a range of tasks. So what kind of applications are we looking at with this new kind of robotic skin? Well, as they reported in the journal Science Robotics, this technology could be used for human prosthetics, humanoid robots, or even in industries like the automotive sector or disaster relief. And from here, this team hopes to further improve the durability of this electric skin to carry out even more tests on real-world robotic tasks. Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about this new electronic skin or more information about Infineon's PSOC 4 family of MCUs, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. And we are on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of June 20th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.